Welcome back boys to beautiful Vail, Colorado. In this episode, we're gonna be checking out the ski schoolie with a thermal camera. This is gonna help us figure out where this bus is insulated and where we're losing heat so that we can stay warmer in the winter and cooler in the summer. Welcome to the ski schoolie. We bought this thing already built out. It already had the kitchen in here, the bed, the couch, the bathroom, and these shelves and stuff. And we've added a ton of electrical and lighting because there was none of this here when we got this. We did a couple of little upgrades. We changed this shelving unit to something more for our big storage. But yeah, all of this, the cabinetry and storage up top. But what's important is that we did not build this from scratch and the couple that did, they lived in New Mexico, so insulation was not important to them. Some insulation up here in the roof that either was from the factory or they did. I know there's also something under the floor when they put in that flooring down there. One of the first upgrades we did, there were some blackout curtains and we just put Reflectix and pink foam temporarily there at night. But the nice thing is we got some corrugated yeah, fluted plastic there. And that's kind of awesome during the day because it lets a lot of light in, but it still provides a lot of insulation. It basically turns the, the windows into a greenhouse. Another really huge upgrade is we put this foam tape, this really thick foam tape over this big giant metal, I don't even know what that was. It's it, basically for the wiring that goes oh, front right, to back right, on the bus. Right, yeah. So we put this foam tape on this runner yeah, everywhere on the bus and it, man it just was we could feel it right away huge difference yep so we're gonna look around with the thermal camera and explore my handiwork see how well i did with some of these things especially in the cubbies and figure out where we need to do more because i know we need to do more so this is the unit technologies or unity uti 120s you like uti sarah the temperature of the dead center of your screen is always going to be in your upper left and then the hottest and lowest points will move around to kind of show you where that is so you can see right now immediately we have a ton of heat loss from the windows that's true of pretty much any schoolie which is why i think that people who get really really anal about spray foam and you know trying to make their school bus like super super insulated and they still have all these windows it's not gonna happen bro <laughs> the, the windows are a huge huge heat loss but overall the the reflectix and pink foam does an admirable job hey sarah don't you You're stop hot. Stop. <laughs> here. This is pretty cool. Check this out. We'll point it down here. 147 degrees. See, your hands aren't even showing I up, know. Sarah. Oh, really? <laughs> no, they're That's too funny. Cold. I was trying to do. <laughs> Why don't you open this up? We actually oh, just insulated this. We realized through playing with this camera that the wheel wells were completely uninsulated in this bus. And so down here, this is where the wheel arch is or the rear wheel so we packed it full of foam then spray foamed it and then put foam on top of that yep. 73 degrees what nice. that's decent yeah. that's decent because that was bare metal to outside so that was just radiating cold in here yeah. you can see that in here we still need to do a better job insulating uh but again it was piecemeal together after it was built so that's how it's going to be and the doors here help too you know yeah we just did in these cubbies here these were bare metal as well, or not bare metal, but like the bare roof. So there's a little bit of insulation in here. Like we said, there's really nothing along these ribs. And we realized actually with the thermal camera that this whole, there's like the section about this, the width of your hand back here that has nothing. So like, it's so cold to the touch anyway, but in here in these cubbies was just the roofing material. And so we put a layer of the pink foam and Reflectix now that made a huge difference here. What we actually tested out is we did pink foam and Reflectix in this one and just Reflectix in this one to see how much gain we were getting with the pink foam. And it was like five degrees different. So now, why don't we do the ceiling? Well, because of that. <laughs> we have, Sarah can walk it's in nice here. It's nice to be little, yeah. But this is, this is the only area where, where I can stand up straight right here. <laughs> uh, otherwise my head, I just have to like do this. So we really don't want to add any more material on the ceiling where we're walking. We might do it above the bed because we're really not walking there. So, and, and like Sarah was saying that you can see there's this band on the ceiling. This is probably one of the worst areas on the interior and it's right above where we're sleeping, which sucks. What else can we show? Oh yeah, you wanted to show the bathroom. Now we can see our, my ridiculous, this is totally hack. We need to redo this bathroom in general. Um, but underneath here is a whole layer of Reflectix. And then I just had extra pink foam that we stuck against the wall. We're gonna actually build a wall for this, but for now we were cold and I had extra material, so. It's not so bad. What do we got here? 70 degrees? Really Ooh, it's 55 yeah. down yeah. there in that corner. What about yeah. this corner? This is probably really bad. 
Ooh, 51. <laughs> 51 near the bucket. Yep. But it's still, again, a massive improvement. And like Sarah was saying, every single ridge on the roof that gives the school bus yeah. its strength is basically a thermal bridge to outside because there's basically an I-beam that goes from right here to the outer skin of the roof and it's just radiating heat. The other big heat loss we noticed was the fan. Oh yeah. The ceiling fan. We haven't uh -huh. done anything about that yet, but uh, it's very apparent when you get on the roof of the bus that your ceiling fan is losing a lot of heat. Where's that thing we tried to use, but it doesn't fit? All right, why don't you explain this? Anyway, okay, so this is one of those things, it's like a plug. I think these are mostly designed for RVs, but it's got reflectix on the one side, like must, I'm assuming closed cell foam in here, and it's got a zipper um, soft thing that you can wash it if you need to. I don't know, I think it's supposed to plug up into, you know, this area here, but for the, the way this is mounted or this style of it, ours is flush. So there's no sort of place to thunk it up into. Um, we're gonna try some of our other fans to see if we have a home for this little guy. You know, we've got a fan like this in the van that's set in a little bit more and two of them in the A-frame. So maybe it'll still be useful for something, but I was really bummed. I thought this was gonna be a, a perfect little like, bunk. here Hold we it go. Up there. Oh wow, it does a great job though. Look at how insulated that is. Is it actually? Just trying to make me feel worse that it doesn't fit. We tried to insulate in here, and this is all storage under here. So we're working our way on it, but it's still a lot of bare metal on there. And all this cold air in here was coming through this gap and landing right on poor Lexi here. So what we did to fix that is we added wood to the bottom of the bed frame to make it completely smooth and then added some foam tape and some pink foam down there. So why don't to you- the, To the ceiling surface. Yeah, so why don't you shut it once and we'll, we'll see how it looks. So it's better. We still need to insulate the walls themselves on that side. We're gonna insulate this whole thing so that 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 storage area can be cold and we'll still be warm in here. I wonder how bad this looks. Oof, it's 38 in that back corner. Oh no. How about over here? Oh man, look at that, look at that oh, metal. Oh, the exposed metal piece, yeah. Right here, this is the fuel filler for the diesel tank. And I did not know how much of a heat loss that was until I went outside with the, with the camera and noticed that it was just glowing red. So <laughs> I've boxed that in with foam. And actually another area that we didn't realize how much of a heat sink it was because the diesel heater's down here, we didn't really think about this as much until again, he was playing with the camera. Under here is where the diesel heater lives. And again, this area isn't quite finished yet, but we made a big improvement on this wheel well as well. Yeah, so this wheel well was completely exposed. And again, talking about noticing things you wouldn't otherwise notice. We just figured the diesel heater was heating up this whole space and it didn't matter. Well, this port we don't have hooked up. And I noticed it was 47 degrees coming in here because <laughs> it was right next to this metal wheel well that's pretty much just right outside. So you can see it's uh, significantly better. 60 degrees everywhere. Yeah, that's decent. It's better. It's a lot better than it used to be. Yeah. So while Sarah is finishing reassembling that, the other big upgrade we did was the emergency hatch right here. Every morning it would be dripping water from condensation and it was really annoying. So for a while we were just wedging foam up there and then eventually we got fed up and we cut a piece of foam and spray foam that biash in there. And uh, yeah, you can see that it's, it's, doing a, it's doing a pretty decent job. Let's see, 70 degrees, not too many cold spots, especially compared to that fan which is yeah. just <laughs> leeching our heat it's still very not pretty we're not done with that we're gonna have to put up some sort of i don't know i actually want to put an air conditioner in there at some point but we should probably put i don't know some fabric or something actually finish scraping off the how about a poster of ski school from oh. 1990 that would be amazing sure whatever you want babe all right and then the other thing i wanted to talk about was the cab uh we have separated that with a thermal curtain that's been here since we bought the bus it does help uh, quite a bit. You can see that near the bottom, it's still getting really cold. There's 45 degrees right in that corner. It does separate the spaces. So we're heating this space and not out here. Ultimately, it would be dope to put in a sliding door at this point because I think it would help seal the cab off a lot better. For now though, we have been trying to insulate the cab, which is kind of a nightmare. So this bus is stationary on jack stands right now. We are not driving it. So we're just using it to store our ski clothes and stuff. And you can see that we have 
covered the windshield with two layers of Reflectix based windshield covers. We have Reflectix and pink foam wedged on the driver's side window. And then we recently just built this thing, which is a thing of beauty. It doesn't look like it from this side, but we used to have the five folding doors and they latch together, but they didn't latch tight. And you had to go down here and use something to try to wedge it into the bottom. And then we put in pink foam and Reflectix and every night it was this horrible. It was so bad. <laughs> and now we have a freaking door handle and it opens like a normal door. And I built a door frame. If you want to see a video on how Sarah and I tackled that, click up here, but this was a huge quality of life upgrade yeah. for the ski schoolie. The other thing that we noticed was this upper portion right here was completely open to the environment. After we cut off the hinges to the bifold doors, there were just open holes there and there was no insulation whatsoever. So today we spray foamed it and look at that, 50 degrees ish, 55. That is a huge, huge improvement from what it used to be because it was pretty much just outside air coming in there. We have also spray foamed and put a ton of foam in here. Look at that, 60 degrees. Yeah, big difference. Yep. So this this was a huge improvement. And then in here, I don't know, this is probably still pretty bad. Yeah, this is the where the, all the fuses are and stuff, so we couldn't do too much in there. I don't know how much oh, you yeah. can see. Oh yeah, 37 in there. Yeah. I tried to spray foam up in there because there's like a wall within a wall but you know baby steps it's getting better and better so this this front cab definitely loses a ton of heat all right sarah you ready to go outside no i'll i'll wait in here and hold. no we're gonna go outside we're gonna play with this thing i'm gonna hold the fort while you go do that it's really hard to see the screen with my headlamp on so we're gonna turn the headlamp off and just walk around the bus and look at the heat losses so this side of the bus is going to be a little warmer because this side hits the sun so it's probably still radiating quite a bit of heat how's the side door doing we have major heat loss right above the door where the bus body meets the the van now we're getting to the side of the bus there's the ladder let's actually get up on the roof quick all right we're on the roof of the ski schoolie again just upgraded the solar system put a huge panel up here upgraded the batteries definitely check that video out if you're interested but here is what the roof looks like with a thermal camera so you can see that the solar panels are pretty cold there that right there dead center that major portion of heat loss that is the ceiling fan right there and then these stripes those are the ribs that give the roof of the bus so much support but they also pull out so much heat so let's get back down you can see there is quite a bit of heat on this rear wheel and that is because that is the exhaust of the diesel heater the other spot i noticed a decent amount of heat loss was right here that is the fuel filler cap so like i showed you guys inside already i've already insulated it all right moving on to the back with the best license plate in colorado we are seeing a huge amount of heat loss on the top edge of the door i've tried to remedy that i'll show you guys what i've done so far but the big the heat loss area was right up here on this weather stripping and I found this weather stripping hanging down here. It wasn't glued up like it should be everywhere else. And then I also put another thin piece of weather stripping on the top edge of the door. You can see that that top part's getting compressed by the other weather stripping. So that should help it seal a little better, but it's still just gonna be like this. I'm not really sure what else to do here. All right, now we're on the passenger side of the bus. Overall, I don't see too much heat loss in the walls themselves, but yeah, those window frames, real bad. Overall, it's not too bad. Ah, see what I mean? That's me. Windows are very reflective for thermal imaging, so it's a bit tricky. Let's go back inside because it is freezing out here. All right. What's up, wuss? You didn't even come outside. I did not. <laughs> oh, we didn't talk about it in here, too. I guess we did a little bit in our food pantry. Just some pink foam, but that's not really as exciting. Yeah, the pantries were also cold, just like the rest of the cubbies, so we insulated those as well. It's just the it's, doors help a lot, but it just yeah, it was just sort of wafting cold air every time you open. It's just baby steps, so you just gotta you just gotta keep picking away at it. And I think going outside really helps because then you find like the biggest sources of loss, and you can start to add some more insulation. He's just there. gonna poke fun at me that I didn't go outside. That's yep. Yeah. It's very helpful to go outside, Sarah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I'm just gonna walk you guys through a couple features on this thing. First off, there's a trigger. You can have this do a few things, but I have it set to take photos. Um, right here, you can see it says image view. I'm just gonna hit okay. 
and I'm going to show you that my favorite image I've ever taken with this. That's my dog. That's a good girl. Look at her. You can see that husky coat keeps her pretty warm, except for the, the head and the legs. <laughs> and then this one's pretty fun to play with. It's palette. So I have it on rainbow right now because I think everyone is equal. You can change it to white hot. So that's you. Okay. Well, bam. <laughs> You can change it to Rainbow HC, which looks really trippy. I'm not really sure how you're supposed to interpret that. Kind of looks like you're on acid or something. It's <laughs> crazy looking. Rob's new favorite toy, and it's not even a Christmas present from me. Speaking of product placement. So, I really wanted one of these for a long time. And Timu reached out to me and said, hey, do you guys want to review a couple products? And I wanted a thermal camera really bad. So they sent me this and I got to pick a few other items to review. So we're going to go over those now. This is pretty neat. It's a spring loaded instant hinge thing. But this is some tape that said it was good for sealing drafts. So if you want white duct tape, this is what you should get. Right, but this one is actually pretty cool. I'm a huge fan of these headlamps. You can get them on Amazon or Alibaba or whatever. I've had a bunch of these. And so I saw this one because they wanted me to pick one more product. And I said, you know what? I'll take the super pimp headlamp with a three LED strips. So Sarah, let's head outside and compare. This is oh, a showdown, a now, shootout. Now I have to go outside. You tricked me into it. All right. Do you want the original one or the triple? Well, since I bought you the original one, I'll I'll stick with my guns here and you can have your fancy new triple and we'll compare. All right, let's do it. Okay. All right, here is our older one. Flood is kind of going to the edge of those rocks there. That's the high powered flood. Spot. spot. Spot's decent. My turn. I have a dimmer spot right here, see? Yep, and a dimmer spot. Okay. You can see that it's going past the rock wall. It is is really bright. Let's check out this spotlight, boys. Look at that spot. So here, I'll do mine's here. Yeah, oh, wow. no, no, go, go, no, just go, just go right there. Look at the difference. Just stop moving. See how much brighter this is? Yeah, it looks like blue. Go into the woods over there. Yeah, your spot doesn't even make it to that tree. <laughs> Sorry, my spot's not good enough for you, Rob. Yeah, so basically this is everything that okay, one is, so funny. <laughs> but so bright. One other thing about the old ones with these single LED strips is that the charge port is in the back. And I don't think this is technically to spec on USB-C, but they sunk in that connector with this ridge of hard plastic. So a lot of cables don't fit in there very well. You bump it and it doesn't charge. You bump it, it doesn't charge. That's super annoying because you leave it plugged in and you expect to have light and then it doesn't work. This one has a much bigger battery and you can plug it in on the bottom here and there's no plastic around there. So you're gonna get a nice solid connection and it's gonna charge great. All right, thanks for watching, dudes. Hopefully you guys learned something about thermal imaging. I definitely did, and it's super fun to play with. It's been really fun to learn more about this stuff, and I've been pretty happy with this thing. I definitely learned a lot, too, about our insulation that we had done before and where we have major gaps, and it's all starting to come together, little puzzle pieces. We'll keep you posted as we use them more in future projects. We have way too many of those, so I'm sure at least some of them will come in handy. All right, till next time, dudes.